All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at the maximum and minimum of a function. You can check out other videos for all the other properties of functions. All right, so the maximum is the highest y value of a function, and the minimum is just the lowest y value of a function. Makes sense? And just to note, we're only worried about the y coordinate in this case, not worried about the value of x. Let's look at maximum first. So it's the highest y value of a function. And just to note, if a function has a maximum of infinity, we just say that it has no maximum. Makes things a little easier. So let's look at an example. And we'll take a look at the function here, and we just look at where's the highest value. Well, right here. Again, we're like focusing on the y-axis. High values are up top. Low values are down bottom. Maximum is right there, and that's 1, 2, 3. So we'll just say that a max, max for maximum of f, referring to function f, equals 3. That's it. Let's look at another example. Where's our highest value in this graph? Right here. What's our y value at that point? 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000. So we're going to say our max. This one here is actually function p. So I'm going to say max p equals 8,000. All right, let's look at another one. Now this one's a little bit different. We notice at the top, it extends off the graph. So that means these lines would continue on and on forever. Go up here and up here. So in this case, we have no maximum. So we're just going to write no maximum. In other words, the value of y here, we just keep getting higher and higher and higher. And one last example. We'll notice this one goes off down here, so we'll write in the arrow. It doesn't actually affect the maximum, though. 1, 2, 3, highest points right here with a y coordinate of 3. So again, our maximum of function f in this case, again, is 3. All right, let's look at minimum now. So minimum, same idea. We're just looking at the lowest value instead of the highest value. And once again, if we have a function with a minimum of negative infinity this time, we just say that it has no minimum. So where's our lowest value? Curves right there. What's our y coordinate? Y coordinate is 1. So we just write it out. Minimum of f equals 1. Over here, where is our lowest value? Oh, right down here. What's our y coordinate at that point. Well, this is 0. We know our scale, every block is worth 2,000. So negative 2,000, negative 4,000. And so our minimum of function p, as it says right here, equals negative 4,000. So it never goes below negative 4,000. Next value, our next step function. Again, we can write in our arrow showing that it goes over the top. Since we're looking for the lowest value, that won't affect it. Here's our lowest value. What's the y coordinate there? Negative 1. Minimum of f equals negative 1. And one last example. In this case, again, we'll note it goes off to the bottom. And what that means is it will continue and continue to the right and down. So in this case, we're going to have no minimum. In other words, it would continue down to negative infinity forever. And uh, that's about it. I just want to look at one special case. Sometimes you might hear something referred to as the relative maximum or relative minimum. And all that means is referring to the maximum or minimum of a specific interval. I hear it oftentimes with uh, weather where they may say, you know, say it was like the coldest day we've had in the last 10 years. If it was the absolute minimum, it would be the coldest day ever. Uh, in the case of relative minimum, it's just saying, well, it's the coldest day within a certain period. In the example I gave, it would be 10 years. So if we look at this function here, we know it goes up and then down and then up again. And what we'll notice is our absolute maximum occurs up here at 8,000, like we stated before. However, we've got another little maximum here. And this is what would be referred to as a relative maximum, meaning it peaks and then it goes down. So while it does get higher over here, it goes up higher. But relative to the points around it, we have a maximum here. And same idea here. It goes down and dips down here. It's not the lowest it ever gets. Our absolute um, minimum would be over here. But compared to the values around it, this would be a, a relative minimum. And uh, all I would say is that when we've got a relative maximum or minimum, we would usually state which interval we're looking over. So if we were to say, hey, we're looking between the 10 and, uh, and 60, then we'd say, we have a relative maximum of, four, of uh, I guess, about 2,500 or 3,000, and we have a relative minimum of uh, about negative 2,000. So there you go.